Noxaby National Wildlife Refuge is alive with sound. Whether it's a lake at dawn, a field at midday, or a forest at dusk, the refuge is filled with a chorus of voices. And it's clear from this wild serenade that Noxaby National Wildlife Refuge is brimming with life. But that wasn't always the case. Much of the land in this area was heavily farmed during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And by the 1930s, poor farming practices combined with drought and a national depression had depleted the soils and left farmers destitute. During the New Deal, the Federal Resettlement Administration bought up many of the worn-out farmlands. In 1940, to restore the land to health and rebuild dwindling wildlife populations, a portion of this land was set aside as Noxaby National Wildlife Refuge. On hillsides and ridges, the Refuge Staff and Civilian Conservation Corps set about enhancing existing woodlands and sowing new hardwood and pine forests for the future. In low-lying areas, they carved out lakes and ponds. And to create additional seasonal wetlands, the staff constructed a series of levees in the Refuge's bottomland hardwood forests. When filled with water in the winter months, these green-timbered reservoirs provide resting and feeding areas for visiting ducks and geese. And as the wetlands expanded and the forests returned, so did the birds, mammals, amphibians, and reptiles that had once called the area home. Initially established primarily as a sanctuary for migratory and wintering waterfowl, the refuge now plays host to some 15,000 ducks and geese during colder months. As waterfowl feed in the lakes and ponds, bald eagles perch high up in the lakeside trees, occasionally swooping down to scoop up a meal. Other dramas play out at the water's edge. Feathers erect in a spiky helmet, snowy egrets rush about the shallows, defending their territories and chasing prey. Fishing is also the main activity of the more sedate wading birds. With lightning thrusts of their beaks, the great egret and the great blue heron snap up aquatic creatures, deftly orienting their catch so it slips head first down their long, narrow throats. For some, breakfast doesn't go down without a struggle. After a hearty meal, a great egret takes time to preen on a branch. Although they're now protected, these tall, statuesque birds were nearly hunted to extinction in the late 1800s. Their elegant white feathers were sought after for use in ladies' hats. A smaller, somewhat more gangly cousin is the cattle egret. Cattle egrets get their name from the fact that they spend much of their time in fields, trailing after livestock or deer, feeding on insects stirred up by the mammal's movements. Cattle egrets nest together in a stand of cypress trees in Bluff Lake. In spring and summer, some 5,000 pairs of cattle egrets can be found nesting there, along with snowy egrets, little blue herons, and white ibis. Late summer is a good time to catch a glimpse of the wood stork, a bird on the state endangered species list that frequents wetlands near the rookery. By fall, as babies leave the nests, the rookery's treetops are almost a solid mass of white as its population swells to more than 30,000 birds. High perches in the cypress keep the young birds away from predators, including American alligators that patrol lakes and ponds. Alligators were introduced into the refuge in the 1960s in an unsuccessful attempt to control a runaway beaver population. The lake provided ideal habitat, and alligators gained a foothold. 
Now the refuge has several dozen of these large reptiles. Weighing up to 600 pounds and reaching lengths of up to 12 feet, alligators are both a thrilling and chilling sight. But scary sights are in the eye of the beholder. To a caterpillar, there's probably no more frightening sight than a hungry frog. While ponds are the province of some frog species, others prefer to hang out in trees. Tree frogs have adhesive discs on their toes that allow them to climb and cling to bark and twigs, while their coloration allows them to cleverly blend into their surroundings. Male frogs are talented singers, crooning love songs designed to lure females to their wetland pads. Frogs and toads have special pouches of skin which they fill with air and force over their vocal cords to give their calls extra resonance. Although frogs and toads are small creatures, their voices carry far into the night. If frogs are the voices of the night, birds are the vocalists of the day. In spring and fall, the wetland and upland forest canopies are filled with the songs of thousands of migratory songbirds. Many stop at the refuge only briefly to refuel as they travel between summering grounds further north and wintering areas in Central and South America. But many birds find the refuge ideal for longer summertime stays. From woodpecker to wood thrush, a variety of forest and wetland species find Noxubee the perfect place for bringing up babies. Noxubee also provides critical nesting habitat for a bird that's on the federal endangered species list, the red cockaded woodpecker. The refuge is one of the few places in Mississippi that has the extensive stands of old growth southern pine trees that the birds require for nesting. And the refuge has gained national recognition for its efforts to boost the bird's population. The woodpeckers build cavities for nesting and roosting in the soft heartwood of older living trees. To supplement the number of available cavities, refuge biologists have outfitted suitable trees with artificial cavities. Biologists use tiny pole-mounted video cameras to monitor activity in both the natural and man-made cavities. When the nestlings are old enough to be safely handled, Biologists temporarily remove them from the nests for banding. The distinctively colored bands will help biologists track the bird's movements once they begin to fly. One of the woodpecker's main enemies is the gray rat snake. These snakes are agile tree climbers, and they like to feed on eggs and nestlings. The woodpeckers have developed a clever strategy for keeping the snakes away from the nests. By pecking small holes in the bark near their cavities, they cause sap to run down the trunk. The sticky sap makes it hard for the snakes to climb up to the nests. To provide additional protection, refuge staff put metal skirts around the base of nest trees. Because the snakes have a hard time getting a grip on the smooth surface, they usually give up their quest. A hiking trail winds through a portion of the woodpecker's habitat, allowing visitors a glimpse of these endangered birds. The best time to see red cockaded woodpeckers is during the nesting season in May. Other trails provide spectacular refuge vistas. The Bluff Lake Boardwalk leads visitors past the Cattle Egret Rookery. And the Goose Overlook is an excellent place to see wildlife year-round. Morgan Hill Overlook provides a spectacular view of Loch Foma Lake. 
Miles of quiet country roads offer wonderful opportunities to observe and enjoy nature's splendor. The refuge is also open to other public uses. Fishing is popular in the lakes and Noxubee River. As summer slips quietly into fall, sportsmen find ample recreation on the refuge. Hunting is allowed for a variety of game species. Controlled deer hunting helps to keep populations within levels that the habitat can sustain. Public education is a priority throughout the year, with interpretive programs offered for adults, as well as environmental educational opportunities for school children. No matter what brings you to the refuge, take some time to look around you. You'll be rewarded by the subtle beauty of a southern forest. And if you take the time to listen, you'll be treated to a most unusual serenade as a chorus of wild voices sings songs of celebration for a landscape restored to life.